What's good, everybody? In today's video, we're going to be looking at the methods to solve rational equations. Make sure you stay to the end of this video because the second method is going to be a key one for this topic. Starting this video out, solving rational equations or expressions, right? We always know we can use the concept of finding common denominators. So if I focused on this first problem and multiply the second fraction by two, I would be able to add this expression and what we would get as a final answer is 15 over 4x cannot simplify any further so let's say we apply that same rule to this problem how do we solve so the first thing we want to know is what is the common denominator and the common denominator is going to be 3x right so on this part right here threes cancel all we need to do is distribute x to 8x plus 13. We're going to get 8x squared plus 13x. And then with this fraction over here, we need to multiply by 3 because it already has an x. So x cancels, multiply 3 by x to get 3x, and 3 by negative 1 to get negative 3. Now with this step, we found a common denominator, and typically when that happens, we're going to either have a rash, uh, a, 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 quadratic equation or a linear equation so now that we have a quadratic we're going to set this equation equal to 2 right plus 10x plus 3 is equal to 0 all i did was subtract 3x add 3 to the other side right so now we're here we're trying to factor but we have a leading uh a leading coefficient so i'm going to use a slip and slide method right so we have x squared plus 10x plus 24 is equal to 0 now, at this step, it just turns into regular factoring for us to figure out the answer. So we're going to have x plus 6 times x plus 4 is equal to 0. And at this step, this is where students always make a mistake. Because we multiply by 8, we have to now divide both these factors by 8. And when we do this, everybody, reduce the fraction. Reduce the fraction. So this should be x plus let's see if we divide by 2 3 over 4 because we can't get a whole number slide this in front we're going to get 4x plus 3 is equal to 0 this is our first factor we're going to solve later over here right this is one half so we're going to have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 now when i set my factors equal to 0 right and we actually solve Let's get a little bit more space, right? Where can we go? All right, let's go out here. We're going to have 4x is equal to negative 3. And then once we divide, first factor is x is equal to negative 3 over 4. All right? Now when we do the same thing with the next factor, 2x is equal to negative 1. We know x is equal to negative 1 over 2. So now we got those two factors, right? And this is using a common denominator. But let's say we backtrack, right? So let's backtrack with this real quick. Hold on. Let's backtrack. Is there another way to solve this? And this method is so key. So let's say we go back now, right? Rewrite the problem. So we can use the properties of proportions, cross multiply to solve this. So let's say we did this, right? So now we have x times 8x plus 13 is equal to 3 by x minus 1. And once we go through and simplify, 8x squared plus 13x is equal to 3x minus 3, we're going to come up with the same quadratic equation. So after I subtract 3x and add 3, we're going to have 8x squared plus 10x plus 3 is equal to 0. Then we will go on and factor like well, how we just did. So th this is another method. So let's practice this one a little bit more with a different problem, right? So in a problem like this, we can use that same method of, of setting up a proportion by cross multiplying. So draw my x, don't have to. We have 8 times x plus 2 is equal to 6 times 2x minus 10, right? So this turns into a linear equation, and we're going to solve for x. So we have 8x plus 16 is equal to 12x minus 60, right? So now we combine our like terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides. 
we have negative 4x plus 16 is equal to negative 60. Once I subtract 16 on both sides, I'm going to get negative 4x is equal to negative 76, if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check the notes. Yup. Now, when we divide 76 by 4, right? Remember, both of these numbers are negative, so our answer is going to be positive. X is equal to positive 19. So this is a much easier method for solving rational equations compared to the common denominator. But in the next problem, we're going to look at a, a more complicated problem. So we're moving on to the last problem of the rational equations video. And typically, when they show us a fraction like this, meaning there's three different fractions, students sometimes get uh, confused. But there's a different method we could solve rather than trying to find a common denominator for all of these terms, right? We could focus on these two fractions and combine them. So if we look here, this is just missing 5, right? Because if we multiply by 5, we're going to get 5x plus 13. So now that the denominator is the same, right? we'll have 10 minus 8 all over 5x plus 15, and this is equal to x over 10. So now with this step, we simplify, meaning what? We just subtract. So now we have 2 over 5x plus 15, and this is equal to x over 10. Now that we've combined these two fractions, right, we now could still use that proportion and cross multiplying to solve. So now in this step, we set up the equation, right? Cross multiply. What we're going to get is x times 5x plus 15. And this is equal to 2 times 10. So after I distribute, we have 5x squared plus 15x is equal to 20. We know it's a quadratic equation. So what? We're going to set the equation equal to 0 by subtracting 20. So now I have 5x squared plus 15x minus 20 is equal to 0. So now with the quadratic equations, right, what do we do? We have to factor. So the first thing we're going to want to do is pull out a greatest common factor. So now I pull out 5. I have x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So now my attention is diverted into here. This is what we're focusing on because this is what we want to factor. And when we look here, we're going to have 5 is on the outside still. Let's see. Let me close my parentheses so I don't get confused. So we're going to have x plus 4 times x minus 1. Now, when we look at this, we set everything equal to 0, right? Let's get some more space. We know 5 is equal to 0. No, that's not true. Then we have x plus 4 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to negative 4. First factor, and in our second factor, x minus 1 is equal to 0. So when we solve, x is equal to 1. So when we're looking at these rational equations, remember, two, really three methods. One, we could just find a common denominator and turn it into one long equation, as in drop the denominator, focus on the numerator. Or we could combine the two fractions, right? then cross multiply to come up with either a quadratic equation or linear equation. So please remember these methods because trying to find a common denominator is very hard, but really hope this review was helpful for you guys on rational equations. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments down below if you guys had any questions on this video or if you have questions on any other videos or there's topics you want to see on our channel. Thank you guys so much for joining us today.